Okay, guys, Arrhenius equation. This question is from an AQA A level chem past paper, paper two, June 2022. As always, I can't show the actual paper on the screen because of AQA's copyright, but I've written it out for us. Got a nice data table here. We're going to break this down and walk you through the process. So let's read through the question. Five marks up for grabs. Arrhenius really isn't that hard, okay? It just involves some mass knowledge, some rearranging ability, and some understanding of units. So let's see what's going on here. The below table shows the value of the rate constant at different temps. So we have two experiments here, experiment one, experiment two, with varying temperatures and varying rate constants, okay? And then we're given a format of the Arrhenius equation right here, and we need to calculate the value in kilojoules per mole of the activation energy EA, and we're given a gas constant as always, right? Now, the biggest tip of your life here for Arrhenius equations is going to be what are the energy units? Now, I forgot to write it actually here, but in the question, they ask you to write out the activation energy in kilojoules per mole, okay? And that's always going to be the case unless they randomly ask you it in joules per mole, but it's normally going to be kilojoules per mole in every question I've seen. Now, now the tip I'm going to give you here is you need to keep the energy units of the variables in the equation constant. What do I mean by that? If we look at our gas constant R right here, which is involved in the equation, it has an energy unit of what? Joules. Okay. They want our final answer in kilojoules per mole. So what they're testing your ability to do here is rearrange an equation to make activation energy the subject. That's the guy we're looking for. And then to also understand that you need to keep energy units consistent in a calculation to give the answer in a specified energy unit. Okay, you can essentially ignore this per Kelvin and per mole and per mole. We can essentially ignore it completely because it's going to cancel in the equation. But the units, if we're dealing with one is in joules and one is in kilojoules, they are not going to cancel. So we need to convert it. All right, so I've given you that tip. Pause the video, attempt the question yourself and see if you can do it. If not, no worries. I'm going to show you what to do. So let's begin. Ln k1 over k2. So I'm going to rewrite this Arrhenius equation right here just in a slightly different format that's going to make it so much easier for us to rearrange. So Ln k1 over k2. If you haven't come across this before, this Ln just stands for natural log and it's just a button on calculator. Not too difficult. You can literally just press it and you're all good. This is going to equal our activation energy EA. Now, instead of it being EA over R multiplied by this, I'm just going to bring this guy, this bracket here, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1, to the top of this fraction, and then all divided by R. The reason you don't have to do this, you can skip this step entirely, but I just... When people aren't too good at rearranging equations, I like to do it like this just so they find it a bit easier, right? Because this right here, this, this expression right here, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1 is exactly the same as this divided by 1, all right? So we can think of it as EA over R multiplied by this over 1. And if we do that right down here, it's going to be EA multiplied by 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1 all divided by r times 1. We can ignore the 1 because r times 1 is just r, and we can leave it like this, all right? So again, you can skip this entirely if you're confident with your maths ability. Maybe you do A-level maths or something like that, but I know all of you guys don't do A-level maths, so hopefully this helps you out. Let's rub this out, rub that out, rub that out, and let's rearrange this expression to make activation energy the subject, right? So all I'm going to do here, if we transform this to make activation energy the subject, is I'm going to times both sides by R to get rid of it on this side. So it's going to be ln k1 over k2 multiplied by R. So we're getting rid of it from this side. And then how do we get rid of this multiplying by 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1? We just divide both sides by it. It's real simple. So I'm going to divide both sides by 
1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. It's that simple, guys. Just a little bit of maths knowledge, rearranging ability, and you're completely fine. Now I'm just going to plug my values from the table straight into this expression to give us our activation energy. So let's do that right now. So activation energy equals the natural log of K1 over K2. So K1 is 1.55 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by K2, which is 1.70 times 10 to the minus 4. We need to multiply that by the 8.31 gas constant and then divide all of that by the 1 over T2. So that's 1 over 333 minus 1 over 303. Okay, not too bad so far. If we plug that into our calculator, you're going to get an answer of 66,936.7478 dot dot dot, right? Now, what did I say earlier, guys? That is super, super important to do for these questions. Pay attention to the units. So the only energy unit involved in this equation so far ignoring activation energy is going to be our joules, right? On this side, our only energy value is coming from the R constant, the, sorry, the gas constant, and it's joules, whereas we want our activation energy in kilojoules, okay? You can essentially ignore the per mole and per Kelvin per mole. You just need to focus on the energy for the sake of this, right? You want to put your, your final answer to the correct units of kilojoules per mole, but for this, just keep in mind energy units. That's what I really want to get across to you guys. So what is this unit right here? This is in joules per mole. Okay, again, joules is the key unit I want you to pay attention to. So how do we get from joules into kilojoules? All you have to do is divide by a thousand, right? So if we divided this long number right here by a thousand, it's going to give us a value in kilojoules per mole of 66.9367478. Okay, we do not want this number of significant figures or this number of decimal places. What we need to do next is we need to look at our table and work out what is the lowest number of significant figures given to us in the data. Okay, so here is three, here is three, here is three, here is three. We also have our gas constant, which is also three. So it's safe to say the lowest number of sig figs is three. So I'm just going to put our final answer to be 66.9 kilojoules per mole. And that is our final answer. Not too bad, right? Five marks. You can bang this out in like a minute or two. If you just have some basic rearranging ability, you're going to be completely fine. The thing I want to emphasize to you for the third time is energy units, energy units. I'm scribbling the hell out of it. Energy units. Please remember this. OK, the same applies to entropy and Gibbs free energy. I know I'm repeating myself like crazy, but please remember this because in the examiner's report, time after time, they say students did not use the correct unit. So I really want to get that across to you guys. So where did our marks come from? Now, first thing I did right here is going to be two marks, okay? We rearranged it in the correct format and we rearranged it to make activation energy the subject. So essentially, this would be our first mark. This would be our second mark right here, okay? But this, if you just did this in one step, would be your two marks. Third mark is going to be for putting in the correct values right here. Fourth mark is going to be our value in joules per mole. And fifth and final mark to the correct number of significant figures is going to be our final answer in kilojoules per mole, five out of five, right? Hopefully you guys found that helpful. I know I just ranted the hell out of you about units of energy, but really remember that key point. Practice rearranging expressions is really helpful overall in chemistry. If you did find it helpful, like the video, it really helps the channel out. Best of luck in your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.